Hi, hello, and welcome to Capricorn Venus Tarot. I'm Capricorn Venus. So today we're going to see what do men versus what do women love most about you. So like, what do men love most about you? What do women love most, most about you? And we'll find the common ground as well. Um, so go ahead and pick your pile. We've got four piles today. Pile number one is going to be the Terramucha. Pile number two is the Ethereal Visions Tarot. Pile number three is Gentle Thrills Tarot, and pile number four is the Book of Shadows Tarot. So go ahead and pick your pile, and I will see you in there. All right. How about that heat wave, huh? You want to talk about the weather? Let's see. All right. Pile number one, let's see. Well, I mean, we did just start, but to get the Hermit and the Empress, as like, as soon as I split the deck, well. I feel like both men and women both really love your strength of personality. It's like, you kind of have a high dose kind of situation where you're extremely loving or like very intense in the way that you interact with people. You're, yeah, I think both men and women um, really love how all or nothing you are, okay? Interesting. Okay, so let's start with men. Let's see, what do men love most? What do they love most about pile number one? What do men love most about pile number one. Mm. Most. The Empress again. I think men love this kind of regenerative quality you have. You must be kind of optimistic in the way you um, engage in life. Maybe you are somebody who, you know, romanticizes the small things in life or really believes in large goals or um, is kind of a ride or die for their family members. I think that men love this about you. It gives them hope. It definitely makes them think about the future more. It makes them feel like there's a lot of possibilities in the world. Um, and you really show that. I feel like also, it's not just that you're sweet or optimistic. It's also that you show men how to be that as well. You're very clear with your purpose, your intentions, your goals. I feel like this clarity and self-motivation is another thing that is like men's favorite thing or the thing they love the most about you. All right. Well, this is interesting. Two of Wands and Two of Pentacles. And yet you're very realistic. That I see I was getting that sense about you. Like, again, you're very direct and you know practically how to create that optimistic world that you're presenting. That's what I'm saying. You have a, a like a teacher's mentality and a very optimistic mentality. So it's like you're you teach men how to be optimistic <laughs> or or just by you being yourself. I think they love that you you want everyone to feel as good as you feel. You want to progress everyone forward. Yeah, you definitely have a teacher's mentality that men are drawn towards. You might be the leader of your friend group if you are a man or if you're non-binary. I just sense like men wanting to follow you or feeling like you're respectable even in your positive outlook. Because sometimes we can only respect the critic, right? But I feel like you are an exception to that where men want to respect you even though you're very optimistic or funny or always keeping things light, something like that. But also like you have a don't let your dreams mentality. Don't let your dreams be dreams mentality, I mean where you you care about that sort of thing. You might have like a Leo sensibility to you. All right, speaking of which, let's see. What do men love most about pile number one? 12 is Pisces. So again, large dreams, dreamy kind of persona. Um, believing that there's more to life than just the day to day, you know, really, reaching for the sky, you know, kind of, kind of energy there. Then we've got 11. So friendships. Yeah. I feel like you, maybe you have a lot of friends that are, are men because I'm just sensing a lot of like friendship, leader, friendship dynamic here. And then four is cancer. 
So you could also have like men in your family that you talk to or help or you are a mentor to. Maybe you have a, a younger brother or something like that. Yeah, if, if, if you do have a younger brother, I'm just sensing like that role being very important to this person and something that they love the most about you is like this role that you have um, and how they feel led by you and they feel supported by you. And so I feel like maybe there, there might be like multiple men that really feel loved and supported by you and pushed in a right, in a good direction. Okay. Yeah, I feel like something that, I feel like the thing that men love most about you, Pile One, is that you push them in a good direction. You keep things bright. You encourage them on their dreams and you walk the walk as well. I mean, you're really just like a pillar to men. That's what I'm honestly seeing. Okay, let's see if there's anything I'm missing. I feel like, again, this, this is giving mentoring or advice giving with temperance and the five of swords. It's like, you calm people down. I feel like you have a very calming presence. You are soothing. Um, yeah, you just must be actually giving advice. I really feel like that's the easiest way for this to all to make sense is that you're, you're actively giving advice to men and helping them when they feel sad or letting them see the brighter side of a situation where they felt like there was no winning. Um, it's like there's the, this defeatist kind of attitude and you bring temperance to that. So you bring patience to these kind of like situations where men have lost or they love that you just know how to make the best of any, any situation. Maybe they've seen, maybe it's not just advice. Like maybe they've seen you do this in your own life where there's a situation where it seems like you clearly lost or, um, you know, you took your L, you you seem like you're the one down and out, something like that. And you really turned that over and you didn't react in anger or something like that because you got temperance. So it's not just like winning all the time. It's something about not being a sore loser, basically. Or yeah, it could even be like in video games, you, you know, you calm someone down when they're feeling like um, they're going to rage quit or something, you know? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting. Interesting. Oh, and we go, <laughs> this is where we started with the Empress and the Hermit. That's so funny. Yeah, again, with this kind of, they also love that sometimes you completely retreat, but then when you come back, it's like no time has passed. So again, you provide a lot of consistency for the men in your life, and that's one of the things they love best about you. So, um, and also you're just like a consistent person as well. Your loyalty and your consistency is kind of one of the things that men love best about you. So let's see with women. Wow, interesting. Knight of Pentacles and the Lovers. So it's like, I think your creativity and your patience are the two things that women love best about you. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot more clear too. I feel like women have like defined opinions about you. It's it's more, um, maybe they've thought about it. They're like, you know, what do I love best about Pal One? Or what, <laughs> what about Pal One makes me so happy to be around them? You know, and they're like, hmm, well, they're very creative. I'm really intrigued by their decision making. Um, they're very loyal and steadfast and not rash. I feel like women feel safe around you. Because like Knight of Pentacles is kind of slow moving. They let people go at their own pace. So w women love that they don't feel rushed by you or also that you don't rush. That you kind of, you have a gentle kind of, again, it's kind of a similar to what we were getting with the men, just like different. Um, but definitely your gentle spirit is coming up in both, both halves. Um, okay. Four, you know, four of wands is like stability, loyalty, happiness, contentment. Yeah. Women really love you for sure. Yeah. I do almost feel like you're, you're seen more by women than you are with men, regardless of your gender. Like women see your value a lot more than maybe men do. I feel like men love those things about you. But it's like, I almost had to kind of pull on that. They love it, but I don't know if they're acknowledging it. 
So men still love that stuff about you, but it's just like they don't acknowledge it the way I'm feeling like women are acknowledging what they love about you. Yeah, there's something else where women love how mutual you are. Okay. Interesting. Stability. Let's see, what do women most love about pile number one? You stand your ground. Again, it's like this loyalty aspect of like standing your ground, being gentle and calm, but still stable and steady. And both both sides of the coin are, this is part of what they love most about you. So you can always pick multiple piles as well. Okay, here's, here's a difference. <laughs> it's funny because you, you don't rush people and you don't... Um, like you, you stay loyal and steady, but you also are very quick. Hmm. You know how to make decisions on the fly, because we did get um, the lovers, which is all about decision making and creativity. Um, yeah, you're quick to make a decision. Hmm. What else there? <laughs> That's funny. Seven of Cups is all about like having lots of options. So I feel like um, what women love best about you is like you go towards what you want very directly. So if you're a man who pursues women or a woman who pursues women, they definitely love how you make them feel wanted and make them feel like they're the only person in the world. You know, like I feel like you are really good at that. So even if you're not pursuing women, I feel like even in a friendship way, they feel like they're the only person in the world. And even if you have lots of friends, they feel like you're a favorite friend. They feel very, um, valuable basically i feel like you make women feel very valuable and protected yeah there's definitely something about safety here yeah you relieve some of women's burdens by you being around maybe you're kind of like a protective friend or you're somebody who um will kind of bully others for your friends you know like if somebody doesn't um get their order at the bar right you'll go up to the bartender and you know figure it out for them or you're the one who calls um the place to get a reservation or something and you do that sort of thing for women um or your women friends or whatever they definitely feel like you relieve you relieve them but i think also with your personality pal one like they love that by you being around they just feel like they're a part of a crew they feel protected they feel like you're the bodyguard and they love that okay Ooh. I, I think they love, I was going to say I love, okay, I love you. Um, but yeah, I just feel like women love that you are very stable and <laughs> um, prosperous and all that stuff. But then you also know how to have fun and, you know, be a little raunchy or you have like a fun, playful, flirty side as well. So you know how to like get down and dirty, but you also like take care of your rent and stuff like that. <laughs> okay. Ace of Cups, stability and passion and connection. That's what women love about you most is like you show how someone can be safe and passionate all in one person. So that is what I'm getting for you. Okay. number two sorry no outro for pile number one I just feel like <laughs> yeah the pile number one you might be pretty serious kind of like um very blunt straight to the point and I feel like both both genders and non-binary people they can they can tell that um and they love that you're just so straightforward and when you're done, you're done. And like I said, you're all or nothing. Like you're all in or you're all out. <laughs> you're a hermit or you're giving them everything at the same time. So, all right, now we can go on to file two. All right. It's funny. Let's Number two, the well in the world. Interesting. Okay, this is my artist pal for sure. Number two. 
what do men love most about pile number two? What do men love most? Well, damn, what do men love most? Okay, pile two. This is funny, but I feel like what men love most about you is how you can face the worst, worst thing they've ever seen and come out winning. Um, I feel like you're a person that men love to bet on because you, you always come out on top somehow. So I feel like men, something that men love the most about you, pile number two, is how expertly you fight or, or it's more of the recovery, the quick recovery or the quick win, the turning the tables. Um, you might be someone who has turned the tables a lot in your life or has had a lot of people come up against them or try to hurt them or break them. Um, and men love seeing you turn this around or men love seeing other people get the karma of these situations or something like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. What else? What do men love most about pond number two? Yeah, you, you just alchemize everything. Like you you turn water into wine. I, I'm just seeing that with cir with circumstances. Um, I think this this artistic lens that everybody can see in you, men really see it play out in like the drama landscape of your life. Um, so men do love hearing your stories. You might be somebody who is always giving the tea to your male friends or um, like something like that. Or if you're a guy, you know, you always have the fun stories where you came out on top or someone thought they... Um, you know, went behind your back at work, but it turned out that you knew they were doing that the whole time. And <laughs> you might be someone with a lot of fun stories. Um, I think you're a good storyteller. And men love this about you, pile number two. Yeah, they love hearing about your life. You're, you're kind of like the influencer of your friend group. That's kind of what I'm getting is like, people are always waiting to hear what story pile number two has. And <laughs> they're, I feel like people are genuinely really entertained by you especially men for this part, you know, we'll see what the women, um, in a second, but I think everyone can see your artistic style, but your, the men in your life, they view you as like this stage play in a way. They love this about you. Like you're a good distraction. <laughs> you know, like you keep things fun. I think, yeah, you're that fun friend. I really feel like you're that fun, interesting friend who, um, always has a fun, interesting story to tell. Okay. Yeah. Do they always know, you know, the truth or the full story of everything? I feel like that's another part of it is like you have this exaggeration or um, you add a lot of flair to things. So nobody ever knows like the full scope. You know, you tell the dra dramatized version of events and people love this about you. Men love this about you. Like, um, yeah, they, they just feel important because the way you frame things gives them a good way to look at their own betrayals or a way to look at their own dark situations and turn it around so in their mind they can still be the winner and kind of move on because I think we all have to do that like reframe our life or reframe our situations with us as the main character and um yes we can fall on hard times and yes we can have things we need to fix but at the end of the day we gotta we gotta make sure we're progressing our own story and I feel like men love that about you pal too is they can always just use your example to build themselves up yeah yeah okay it's like all of these are kind of in reverse though too so it's just I think you are very funny in the way that you talk and nobody ever knows if you're kidding or not and you or men don't know if you're kidding or not you can never tell if you're being sarcastic or like if this is all true or if this is kind of an exaggerated story or if it's even worse than you're saying or you know there's like this sense of um it doesn't really matter i think when men are with you it doesn't really super matter you you transport people out of their day-to-day -day, out of their boring lives and you you bring them into this dramatic landscape from which they can see their life from a higher perspective, engage in your um, highs and lows, um, <laughs> and uh, just really be taken away to like a secret place where, you know, it's just like a private getaway. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just feel like that. They're really transported by you, men. Let's see, the star, ace of swords, nine of pentacles. What a story each of these is as well. Like three of swords is like heartbreak. Um, and we got a reverse. So like 
it's unexpected too. There's definitely something unexpected about you. So let's roll the dice. What do men and women love most about pile number two? Five, Leo, of course, you've got the stage presence. You, you shine like the sun. You're definitely the star of the show. We did get the star here, and now we've got Leo, which is the sun. Taurus for two. Yeah, okay, so also the way you dress and style yourself, men love this too. Because, again, there's a drama to it. I, I think that men love that you take yourself so seriously, Pal, too. Because it makes them take themselves seriously, too. But I think you're also just fun to watch. You know, it's not all, all about them. But I feel like it's something they love the most about you. It brings out that spicy side of themselves. Okay, so four is cancer. Yeah, you're just dramatic. I honestly feel like that's something that people just love about you, Pal, too, is how dramatic you are. Yeah, you, may, you really make life seem that serious. And you put things in terms that allow people to be a little self-serious and allow people to be a little dramatic. You got to be dramatic about your own life sometimes, you know, because sometimes it is that serious and it wasn't right the way they acted. And I did rise from the ashes, you know, like, and you really bring that pal to you, to men. You, you make them understand that if you, if you can engage in a little dramatics and understand your life through a story lens, you can actually learn something. You can actually grow from that and you can turn your pain into success. Um, and you really provide the pathway for that, pal, too. How to look cool doing it, too. You know, <laughs> you, you bring that dramatic flair and you have the story and you have the framework and you live in a big, dramatic, large way and you make them feel like they're the only people in the world with you there. Um, you know, we're the winners. We're the best. You provide that kind of crew kind of feeling because you have this larger than life flair. Strength. Yeah, makes sense. Leo again. And this is kind of a Leo thing I've, I've found. The more Leo placements I see, um, the more I feel like they, they are just the masters of making a cheesy phrase or like a cheesy way of looking at things make sense. You know, because some of those cheesy phrases, they, they've got some truth in them, you know? Um, <laughs> and sometimes you're just going to be like, love conquers all. And then like really go gung-ho for that, you know? Um, or just do it. Or like I was just saying in the last pile, don't let your dreams be dreams, you know? that Those kind of phrases, yeah, they're funny and like, oh, cringe, whatever. But it really can help you out, <laughs> you know? And like, if you really just go for it, some of those phrases, like they were made for a reason. Um, yeah. And then what else is you take betrayal very seriously too. Yeah, I could see this. I think something that men love most about you, Paul, too, is that you show them that, yes, betrayal is that serious, and it's okay to be upset about that. You know, because I think a lot of the times men are not given the framework of understanding themselves as being wronged. You know, it's like they have a real aversion to being like, quote unquote, the victim in a scenario, but it can be like a, you know, a success story. So I feel like you provide a good, again, framework for them to understand the, their own betrayals that they went through. Like, if I, if it's almost like these people or these friends of yours or something, the men in your life or the men who meet you, they can look at this and be like, okay, so I can be the person who was betrayed but is now successful. So it doesn't have to be stuck in the mud, stuck in that victim space, head space. Um, and you show people that you can in, embrace that hurt side of you in order to catapult yourself into the six of wands feeling of feeling successful and independent. And I did it all on my own, even though people tried to come against me. So again, yeah. Showing people what strength is and you've rallied or like wrangled your own demons. And so they feel more comfortable doing it as well. But they also just love that you have done this, that you've tamed yourself, that you understand yourself or you understand the kind of rougher side of you. It's reminding me of the book Steppenwolf, where it's like the, the main guy feels like he has one side of himself that's like a wolf that can't be controlled and has lustful desires and all this stuff. And then the other side of him is like a weak-willed man and, and like um, who just wants to be polite all the time. And the whole book is about those sides of yourself are actually the same person and, you know, they exist in the same person and they're not actually at war. And I feel like you show that. It's not a perfect book, okay? Um, it's German and like from a long time ago, so... Not perfect, but great example of what men love about you, <laughs> which is that you, you, you wrangle both sides of yourself, that animal side, you know, um, and then that more logical, you know, 
looking at things from a higher lens side of yourself. You can be both. Yeah. Also that you engage in pain. You don't, you don't just gloss over it. Men really love that about you. So, okay. Now, what about women? What do women m love most about pile number two? Forgiving and learning. Interesting. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. That's connected, right? Because I feel like then what women love most about you as well is this sense of knowing what hurts you. I feel like women love most about you, pile two, that you have done the self-study. And again, this is kind of an artistic thing, right? When you're an artist, you take a lot of inspiration from your own life. So you tend to try to think about your own life a lot and analyze what's happened to you. So I feel like women love this about you, that you have this analysis of your life and analysis is what, of what's gone on and um, what you learned from it and, and how it ended up being a blessing. You know, your hardships ended up being a blessing. You have like a whole, um, you know, in-depth sense of yourself. And the women in your love life really love this. So, okay. This is what they love most about you. Interesting. Okay. So I'm sensing like with women, it's like there's a lot of stuff that they like about you and that they find interesting and creative and aspirational about you. Um, things that they look back on and love. But I think what they love most about you is your, your self-knowledge and how you know yourself. And you're okay with being alone because you've kind of delved into your own psyche. Yeah, okay, wow, okay. Let's see. Imagination, yeah, okay. Definitely artistic. This this pile, um, everyone thinks that you're this an amazing artist. So if you're literally an artist, I think men and women alike love that about you. And they think it's excellent, excellent work, pal <laughs> too. Um, yes, your work is excellent, so... Okay, I feel like I need to pull one more of these. What is women's favorite part of pile number two? Reconciliation. Where does that realize that it comes to you now? Yeah, with this, I'm just getting like, you know what you want and you're very clear. But I feel like women also, they love that you see the gray scale in life. You know that somebody who hurt you can, can make amends and come back from things. And I feel like, again, this comes from, I, I feel like it's a baby, basically a branch for women. The, the trunk of the, the tree for what women love most about you, Paul, too, is your self-knowledge. And because of this self-knowledge, you've seen how people can make mistakes. And so because you've seen that in yourself, you forgive others who do the same thing as you. So maybe you've had women in your life who have wronged you and you know you guys were able to reconcile because you know yourself and you know how you could have made the same mistake they made. And so you're easier on these people, okay? Yeah, you're really understanding because of your own self-understanding. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, and we did already get forgiving and learning, and this is reconciliation. So, hmm. Yeah, you, I feel like another thing that women love about you the most is that you know the cycles of a relationship. You know the cycles of a friendship or the layers that it takes to get to know someone. Imagination, though. Let's get a clarification on the imagination. Queen of Wands. Okay. Yeah, you don't know, just know how to reconcile. You don't just know how to become friends with someone. You're active. You're, you're on it. I feel like you might be a person who... You'll be the one to send the apology text to women. Or you're the one who, like reaches out after a long distance or can feel the vibes kind of shifting or you maybe you feel like someone's not vibing in a certain environment and you're the one to speak up or you're the one to try to turn it around invite them out or yeah get them a gift unexpectedly or something like that yeah it's like you can feel the tides of a relationship again because you know yourself and so when you see something that 
in yourself would mean that you wanted more attention or that you wanted an I'm sorry from a friend or that you wanted to, you know, go out for a drink because you know how bad that, you know, whatever scenario you saw your friend going through can be, then you do it. I feel like you're, you're an action-based person. You keep the plot moving. <laughs> yeah, you definitely keep the plot moving. Knight of Swords. Again, I'm getting like, even when, okay. Yeah, women also love that you're not so hung up on, I was right, I was wrong, or you were wrong and I was right, <laughs> and all this stuff. Like, you just kind of want to be reconciled. You don't hold women's feet to the fire. That's kind of what I'm getting. And again, they're, they're, they're referring this all back to, you know how it feels to be that person who gets the I told you so, that, that you don't like it and nobody would like it. And so you don't do it either. Um, there's something about that. Like you, you don't have a double standard. If you know it's not nice because you know how it felt with you, you don't go ahead and do that anyway. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I think we all meet a lot of hypocrites in our life. So I think just women love that you're not a hypocrite, you know, like you, you see things that could go wrong in relationships and you actively try to not allow that to happen. You know, like, you know how to keep people around. Yes. The Hierophant. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> that's literally perfect. Cause it's like the Pope. Um, so it's supposed to be, you know, you would hope that they hold themselves to a high standard as well as giving advice to others. And I feel like that's what women love about you is like, you hold yourself to a high standard as well as being really good at, at advice. But you also like are okay with taking the high road and being the one to humble yourself because of your status as the Hierophant, if that makes sense. Because you're known as a person who cares about those things, knows themselves, has gone through you know lots of different cycles and lots of lessons, you don't mind being the bigger person in scenarios and reconciling first, even if it was the other person's fault. I don't know if that's happened to you with a woman, so. Anyway, um, yeah, that is what I've got for you, pal, too. Thank you very much. Very fun. Yeah, you're definitely dreamy, too. You have, you have a dreamy, luxurious kind of sense to you that anybody can notice. So, yeah, thank you very much, and I will see you next time. All right. Okay. Coming out swinging. Pile three. This is the, the deck that's really hard to shuffle. Temperance and Ace of Swords. Dang. Okay. So I think everybody loves most this uh, way of speaking that you have. Oh my gosh. I cannot shuffle this. Ah, I give up. Um, I think everybody loves how you spend your energy. Um, pile three. They, anybody loves that you, <laughs> okay, I think you're very funny, um, and all people of all genders love this about you, and you're not self-serious, okay? Yeah, you have a jester vibe. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Okay, pile three. Let's, we'll start with the men. What do men love most about pile number three? Temperance. And temperance is also ruled by Sagittarius, which is kind of funny because Sagittarius is known as kind of like sometimes they can say things they don't mean or, you know, speak too fast basically um, before they've really thought it out. But then temperance is patience. So I always did think that was funny. It's more like, Temperance is either the lack or the use of patience. You know, correct me in the comments, but I'm just... I think men love that you sometimes lash out and sometimes are able to control yourself. So it's almost like this sense that men love that you have a breaking point. You know, like you're not... You're human and you're still trying to do the right thing. Okay, interesting. What else? What do men love most about palm number three? Interesting, 10 of swords. 10 of swords and temperance. What do men love most about palm number three? And the high priestess. 
She seemed to know a lot. Wow. I think men love most this kind of mystery that you have. You you have a lot of depth, pal three, a lot of depth. Um, a lot of different sides to you. Men feel like you have an advanced look at the world. Um, very intellectual. You have an emotional and um, intellectual kind of look at things. Like you know how to understand both sides. Because I'm, here I'm getting like, there's kind of pomegranates on the thing over here. Um, so like Persephone, you know, what is she? She's like a um, fertility goddess and the goddess of the underworld. And I feel like that's the kind of energy you're giving off. Someone who understands being patient and above it all. And someone who understands being in the absolute pits of hell. Um, you know, like uh, just on your worst day. And then also someone who knows how to hide away and just know things and kind of, again, like <sighs> this perspective. I think your perspective is what men love most about you. What else? Interesting. Seven of Swords and Temperance. Yeah, you have this, again, this, okay, so that's kind of what I was saying in the beginning with Temperance was, you know when to strike. So to, sometimes you hold back and sometimes you strike. So I feel like men love that you know how to pick your battles, for sure. And they feel like this is because of, like, you're hardened, you're battle-worn. Um, you know the game or you know how things work with this high priestess, higher sense of knowledge. Okay, what do men love most about pile number three? One is Aries. You know how to put yourself first. Men can see this. They can see, because kind of with all this strategy talk we're talking about, you know how to make yourself be the one that's coming out on top. You know you know how to keep, keep you in the clear. Nine is Sagittarius, which we did get with Temperance already, and eight is Scorpio, that makes sense. So nine is all about higher learning. It can also be about travel. So I think, again, this, this taps into that sense of using lots of different kinds of perspectives. Maybe you know about different cultures or maybe you grew up around, um, you know, maybe you're bilingual and so you grew up around multiple cultures and men sense this about you. But insert whatever kind of situation, maybe you grew up poor and then you moved into a wealthier area so you know things about um, both sides of the coin, you know, and like you know how to interact with lots of different kinds of people. There's just something about you bringing in lots of different kinds of perspectives and using them in your life. So again, tested, worn. You you know you know how things work. You're not you're like an old veteran to men. Like they can tell that you're a veteran, and that you you're you you know you have lots of gold medals. <laughs> I don't know. You seem like somebody who's like a decorated veteran, and men love this about you. They feel like they can go to you for advice. Like you'd be like the hand of the king kind of vibe. Okay. Yeah, well, Queen of Swords. Your intellect. I think men love most your intellect and how you know how to fight with your words, for sure, for sure. And again, with this sense of choosing your battle. So it's all of that battle strategy. Um, you know, maybe in a debate, you're really good. Something like that, where they can see your strategies play out and they love this. Maybe at work, you always can set a a plan really far in advance and 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 think about every possible thing that could be a problem and evade it before it comes up or you know you know how to set yourself up for success in the future judgment well pile three very interesting it's also you're you're just never left out in the cold because all you need is you that's how men feel anyway this is what they love most about you is that you are a one person show like you are the queen, you make the decisions, you're the queen or king, you're the judge, you're the person who, it doesn't matter who puts you in the cold, you always end up on top because of the superior knowledge that you have. This judgment, this discernment. Men think you're a genius, pile three. They think you're a genius and they think you could easily be a super villain also. Like, that, that's what I'm getting, okay? So that's what men love most about you. <laughs> They wouldn't want to be on your bad side. And if they are, they're, they're scared. But 
I don't, I feel like this is what men love most about you. So it's like, they just think this is really cool. <laughs> That's what I'm getting here. They think you're really cool. They kind of like to see you in action. And they go to you for like a withering critique. You know, you might be the friend that men introduce people to, to kind of see what their worst traits and what their best traits are. You know, people or men ask you, yeah, they might ask you about romantic partners. They might ask you about, do you think this job is a good idea? And they know you'll give it to them straight and that you'll think like 10 steps ahead and you'll, you'll notice things that they would never have noticed or thought of because you've experienced stuff that they haven't, you know, that's, that's how men see it anyway. And they, they love this about you. So let's shuffle this a couple times. Let's see what women love best. I think women also respect this sense of you being, um, the decorated veteran. They, they sense that you've been through shit and women love this. They love that they know they can trust you. I feel like even women who do not know your story, they get that sense from you that you've been through something and it makes them respect you more. And it's something they love about you that you're not just talking out of your ass. <laughs> it's it's funny the way things are getting phrased. Maybe you and your friends kind of talk in a more harsh kind of um, like fake jabby kind of manner. And you guys are always, you know, doing witty banter back and forth because that's kind of energy I'm getting here. We did pull the Queen of Wands a second ago when I split the deck. And so, yeah, I do feel like you have that witty banter that women love too. You can carry a lot. I, I get the sense that with women, it's pretty cut and dry in terms of what they're, what they love best about you. The best thing is that you handle your shit and you've been through something and you know how it works and you don't need help. <laughs> you know, like you've got it. So I feel like women want to help you. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, women want to help you. They love that they can feel like they can help you whenever you ask because you're not one to ask. It's like they trust that you must really need the help or, or that they feel like honored that you even ask them for help because they know how self-sufficient you are and they know how like you're, you're a Miss Independent if you're a woman. And then if not, I just feel like you're just known as like someone very independent. And so when, when you ask for help, it's seen as an opportunity instead of a burden, you know, cause sometimes there's people that are always asking for help or always need something. And you kind of have to implement boundaries with them almost because, um, otherwise they could bleed you dry. Even if it's not on purpose, it doesn't have to be anything negative. Um, it's just that you can't always be giving advice to those kind of friends because then they get reliant or codependent. And a lot of women deal with codependent relationships in their lives. So I think that's something they love about you is that you don't, you don't push them into that scenario where they have to put in boundaries or you're not one for a codependent relationship because you really are more, <laughs> if you have any flaw, it's that you're too independent and you don't ask for help enough, you know? <laughs> so like you're easier to trust for that reason. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like also you are the type to really be a hard worker. You do work with a smile. You are not, yeah, you're not lazy. Four of Wands. You want to build something long lasting. I think women respect where you're coming from. Like this point blade like period, that's what they love best about you is that they respect you. Um, <laughs> pile three. Yeah, <laughs> that's honestly, I'm just kidding. They really, res women really respect you. Eight of Cups, again, this is like another card that is somebody that you would really respect. This is someone who walks away from a supposedly good thing or um, a sweet deal, but where there's a lot of red flags. And so oh, it doesn't have to be. Eight of Cups is not inherently that. That's just what I'm getting here is like, you would be the type to walk away from a sweet deal because you didn't want to feel controlled. You know, you, you're the type to walk away from something you've invested a lot of time in because you know your worth and you're willing to go out on a limb because you have you and you are all you need. You know, it's like, that's the kind of energy I'm getting that women love about you. You empower women, I think. Okay. And you don't have to be a woman to be empowering women. Yeah, you show them. It's funny because I, 
this is kind of pal one was being a leader to their male people around them. And I feel like you are a leader to the women around you um, because you show them what to walk away from and what's something they should try to heal from and what's something they should try to build on. Because again, they respect you. I feel like that's what it comes down to. What they love most about you is that they respect you. And then there's all these things that are making them respect you <laughs> that are, um, you know, that they're learning from you. But I think that's what it comes down to. So that's what I've got for you, Pod 3. A little more succinct. We didn't even have to take much out. So I feel like that also relates to what women love best about you. You don't have to say much, but they know where you stand and you teach them a lot just through being yourself and, you know, knowing what is worth staying around for and knowing what you have to leave. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know your worth. And, and again, the sense of judgment and knowing what's right and wrong. Um, and being very independent and the kind of freedom that allows you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... That is all I've got for you, Paul Three. Thank you very much. And I will see you next time. Okay. Pile number four. Are you outdoorsy, Pile number four? I feel like um, men and women both love how outdoorsy you are. You make them look at nature twice, you know? You might be the type to stargaze or kind of get that dreamy, wistful look in your eye when you're looking at... Um, something naturally beautiful. You're, you might be a sunset kind of person or a sunrise, you know, more, more power to you if you are, <laughs> but okay. Um, let's start with men. So what do men love most about pile number one? Pile number one, what? Okay, I actually feel like we're gonna do women first. Let's see, what do women love most about pile number four? What do women love most about pile number four? Six is Virgo. Twelve is Pisces. So those are both mutable. And then five is Leo. Okay. You make people, you make memories. Like, I feel like you make memories with people. When they're with you, they feel very present. They feel very alive. Women feel very alive. They feel like their life matters and they feel very important. Hmm. They feel, they feel, they feel. I feel like you make women feel very intensely. So there might be people in your life or women in your life that, um, I'm always getting that like men and women have the same thing that they love about you. Cause I keep switching back and forth and I, I was not doing that in all the other piles. Yeah, I think with you, it's the same thing for both. So, and non-binary too, you know? <laughs> I think everybody agrees, um, regardless of their gender, that you make every moment feel magical. You make people slow down and enjoy the little things like a nice glass of wine or a delicious meal. <sighs> you make people care about romanticizing things. Um, you might even spark a lot of romance in people and spark the desire for romance. So even in your friendships, I think the way that you treat people makes them, you know, think that love does exist or that they could romanticize more parts of their life and enjoy themselves more. Hmm. You definitely have like an attention to detail. This might sound funny, but I feel like Men and women both love that you are very clean and kind of care about like smelling good and like I said, eating delicious foods or like more sensory kind of things. I feel like men and women both love that you are very into sensory pleasures, you know? Um, easy things to obtain too, like the sunset and a good meal, you know? Like it's not the easiest thing in the world, but like pretty low bar anyway. Um, yeah, you love the little things and it doesn't take a lot to please you. And it doesn't take a lot to have an enjoyable moment with you. I feel like you're that kind of person that you can just sit on the couch with 
and it was an amazing, amazing memory that they never forget. Um, you, I would say you bring a lot to the table <laughs> as well. What do men, men and women love this about you? Like you, you have a lot to give. Um, I think your company is incredibly powerful. It's almost like men and women alike. They see this sense that you are kind of like, I don't know, like you, <laughs> like people would pay to have you go out on a date with them or pay to have you as a wingman or I feel like men and women alike have had this thought separately and they'll use whatever terms they think of. But basically people think that they, there are people that would pay for your, um, basically your presence or just having you around. Just having you around elevates the whole day or elevates people's whole lives. Um, yeah, you're a very valuable partner, friend, sibling, daughter, you know, like you, you put in a lot of work, it seems like. But also it's like not a lot of work, but, but rather you, again, you bring a lot to the people in your life. Okay, what are people's, you know, favorite, what, what do people love most about pile number four? Yeah. Hmm. You shift people's worlds. You make, again, you, you calm people. You bring people down to earth. You center the people in your life. You're, you're like a pillar in people's lives. You, you have to be with the way this is feeling. It's, or even, even to the people that you're not the pillar in their lives, I think they love that you are a pillar in some people's lives. Maybe you have coworkers that hear about how you're going to your grandma's house and you always cook her dinner on Sunday nights or something like that. And people love that about you, that you are that loyal to somebody, even if it's not them. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Oh, the emperor. Temperance, the hangman, and the emperor. So you got all major arcana here. It's, yeah, you're, you're a very powerful presence. And you have all these different sides to you. You might feel like you're the only adult in a room sometimes, um, pal four, but people love that about you. They feel like they can rely on you. They feel like you're someone that they can look up to and admire. Um, I, I'm trying to think of this. There's this concept where either a book is about the main character learning and growing from their flaws or the book main character serves as like a beacon of what they should do that's right. We don't have a lot of books like that anymore, but they used to do that a lot in Greek mythology and stuff where somebody was perfect basically. And so we're using them as a guidepost. And I feel like that's what people love most about you. You know, and you might say, I'm not perfect. That kind of just makes you more perfect that you're able to acknowledge it. So <laughs> I just feel like you are a role model for sure. But it's almost like it's not... Mm, it's not even just that you're a role model to these people. It's that they see you're a role model in your community or something. Okay. Because some of the other piles I got that they're teaching their friends and that sort of thing. I'm not even getting like, I, I think that anybody notices about you, this about you and they love this about you. The loyalty that you have or um, how amazing it feels to talk to you or be near you. Like you, you kind of have celebrity status in the way people think about you. You might get a lot of people that don't even approach you because they think you're like too good for them or something like that. Okay. What do people love? The sun, you know, like what the fuck? This is so much major arcana and such, such strong feelings that you're invoking in people. And I think that's why it's non-gendered for you, even though this is kind of like a gendered reading I was trying to get. Just because your personality is so strong that everybody loves most the kind of the same thing about you pal for is that you're amazing <laughs> they just love that you're so amazing i think it's hard to quantify um what people love most about you because you you are larger than life you know people just see you in a cartoon kind of way in a way um okay what do people love most about pal number four here we go three of wands but also look at the images here so we have these two, this couple um, having a nice dinner. A lot of the food is gone. They're already on des dessert. Feels like it's their fifth glass of wine, right? You can just sense this memory being made, this like fun evening, candlelit even. Um, there's a warmth to it. And then the sun is clarifying that. So it's all, this is a huge party. It looks like a family party where um, 
you know, there's kids, there's grandpa, you know, <laughs> like, um, it feels warm, it feels inviting. And then we've got yoga, solo yoga in the morning sunlight. And then we've got, you know, over here, you're working late, making sure everything is good, checking things off the calendar. And then over here, somebody's delivering the mail while you got your candles lit. Looks like you just got out of the shower. You got a warm cup of coffee by the fireplace. You know, you, ha you know how to live life, Pal Four, and people love this about you. You really know how to live. And that's why everyone can just watch you and they learn how to live from this too. You know, it's like, yeah, people learn a lot from you. That's so interesting. The chariot, wow. The chariot and the emperor. So you can be the boss babe and you can be the sentimental. You know, like you can have the self care and be very active and get up early. And then you can lounge and be comfortable. Again, it's like this duality. I think that men and women love most about you. We did mention how it makes it even better that you know your flaws and you know when you're being too much or you know when you have some stuff to work on or you know where you're immature and you try to work on that. I think this is another thing that um, men and women both love about you is that you're always working on yourself. You're your own project as well as it's like, yeah, <laughs> hmm. they can learn even more from you because you care to keep learning. It's just so funny because they, I think men and women also love that you do have some weaknesses and sometimes you can get down in the dumps or you can be hurt by things. You're still human. You're still human and, and, and yet you hold it down for everybody around you and you are very fun to be around um, and yet you know how to take time away for yourself. You know how to go out with your friends. Like, again, there's this duality, but it's also like the perfect way you do the duality. It's not just that you have it. It's like, it's expert. Ace of Swords. You like to tell the truth. Ten of Cups. And you try to do, you're always doing your best. If I just had to boil it down to one thing, it's like, you're always doing your best. And your best is really, really great. <laughs> Pop for it. Your best is very impressive, very warming to people. Again, makes people feel important. I feel like you really bring people back from the brink, honestly, men and women. Yeah, you speak truth into emotional situations. And and sometimes, again, it, it, it is important to notice, like, sometimes you're weak too. And you know, sometimes you break down and sometimes it's too far. And so this allows people to do it in their own life too. Yeah, a lot of a lot of teachers um, in this reading. So thank you for your service, guys. Thanks for helping the people around you. We all need it. Um, I'm sure everyone's always said this in every era that's ever existed, but the world is very tough. So it's good that you are helping the people around you become stronger and happier and healthier. Um, and that you do that for yourself as well. So make sure you ask for help. It seems like you can, but people really respect you and they view you as this like just cool figure. So, you know, you can reach out more. I think, <laughs> I don't know why I needed to give you advice in this one pile for, but I think when you're this big of a pillar and role model to so many people, it seems like, um, it's always good to remember that you can reach out to those people that you you've already helped them so feel confident that you've helped the people around you so that you feel more comfortable asking them to help you back so yeah that is what i got for you pal four thank you very much and i will see you next time